All right, this is the day I've been looking forward to. Maybe some of you guys have been too. Finally, we're inside the garage. We're gonna do the Husqvarna 372 Chinese build. Got the Chinese engine. Got some parts we're gonna swap over. Came with a plug. Farmer plugs, all the parts are farmer, but the one had a brand new NGK. So we're gonna use that one. We're gonna start swapping these parts over. And then we're gonna see just how long this sucker's gonna last. I'm gonna start by, we're not gonna use the old exhaust, but I am gonna use some of the screws. So we're gonna start pulling this off and just to see if there's anything else in there that I need to transfer over. I also need to take that off. Gotta remember the orientation. We can also salvage the decompression tab or lever off of this. And with the aftermarket muffler, you may want to pay attention because there is no spark arrest. All right, the decompression tab is a 13 millimeter. Oh, you bastard, I gotta put it in the vise. I mean, it's much easier. This cylinder head's garbage, anyways. In case you're curious to know how that works. Oh yeah, of course something like this is gonna come along and bite me in the ass. Somebody took the flywheel nut off, god damn it. Wonder what size that sucker's gonna be. Well we definitely need an M8 by one nut. Metric nuts are gonna be pretty hard to find. These are all odds and ends from a C2 engine that's all metric. And I thought I got lucky with this one. Cause it's almost a perfect fit. But this is coarse thread, and that's a fine thread. I did have that Articat I stripped down a few years ago. That's a coarse thread too. I might get lucky and find some inside here, perhaps. Well, I did actually bust out the tap and tapped one of these nuts M8 by one. Just to see if I was in a bind, if I could make it work. It'd be a little sketchy. But if you're out and about and had nowhere else to go, would have to do. Plus I had to pull the die out because the thread on that was kind of screwed up. So I had to correct that. I can definitely transfer this piece over right now. That part's on. Found the first casualty of war. Looks like the threads on this one here have been stripped for a long time. So two exhaust bolts are the same size. Put them in there. Now this is where the jigsaw puzzle begins. Where do we start? I think I'll start at the recoil. And work our way around. Get that stripped off. Get the backside stripped off. And then lastly, do this part perhaps. I'm not too sure yet. This is where it's going to get interesting. This has a stator, probably for the heated carburetor, I'm going to assume. Oh, the block I got doesn't have the holes drilled, which means I'm gonna have to drill the holes for that. Well, the drill top size I need is 1 8. Let's just stick it in the hole and mark it, because that's how deep. Whoops. I don't know if you can see focus, focus, that's how deep we're gonna have to drill. This is where it's gonna get fun, because you gotta watch that mark. Because if we drill too far, we're going to drill into the crankcase, and that's gonna be a day ruiner for us. Put a rag in the intake port so I don't get any filings in there. Well, let's tap those holes. Well, it's a good thing I have the tools to do the job. Otherwise, this could have screwed me over. You know, we're getting all these holes tapped, and then we'll be back in business. If you look closely, see the gap on that screw head right there? 
compared to that one there. What I did is after I tapped it, I put my tap focus in the grinder to flatten that tip off to kind of make it a poor man's bottoming tap so I can get those extra threads so the stator can definitely fit on. So you can see for example on that one there how it has that tip. Well I kind of made this one a poor man's bottoming tap to make it work. There's another thing with that Chinese engine is that those don't line up perfectly either for this little exhaust fan so I'm gonna have to drill that out. You don't want to bust that pin off because when the flywheel is flying around it'll catch this and break it so 1 8 drilled it out it's like no play good and although we got the flywheel and everything else off you know I'm not gonna chase these wires we're gonna take this whole section off as one it looks like I got a bolt there a bolt on the bottom it looks like four up top and hopefully this should pull out Push the wires to the side and get it out. I think I'm ready to pull this out. There's one extra screw down here. One on the side right there. And I pulled the one out right there. I also disconnected the throttle cable, which made this top plate a little bit looser. And I'm hoping that we could slide this body out. these wires through carefully stator perfect for split a couple things from the old engine block I had to transfer over for like this rubber tab right here and that little rubber piece right there ah, well everything was going smoothly till I had it all together and I realized that the throttle cable isn't working now something disconnected and in order to give me more room I pulled off the fuel line even though I drained the fuel, there must have been fuel in the carburetor or shit like that because everything just went pissing right out. Now I'm going to get high on gas fumes while trying to get this together. Ah, shit. I opened up a can of worms now. This came out. The throttle cable came out. Fucking gas fumes is making me ill. There should be a spring around here somewhere. Ah, fuck. Now it's time for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Taking this top plate off, doing the conversion, I ended up screwing up my throttle cable. It's back together too. And I removed this part, but you don't have to. In order to uh, reset the throttle cable, punch that little pin out right here. This is gonna be on a spring. It just pulls straight out. And then you can see that line that goes right there. There's a little lever, or a little slide that it goes into. And then the cable actually comes around like that. So you could reset it like that. Now that's set up. Now. This throttle boot can be a little bit of a bitch because everything's pretty tight here. So what I did is I nosedived it in and like that and then kind of use some tools to kind of push it in at the bottom. This clamp here is going to be pretty tight and then you want to make sure this doesn't get pinched when you do up this top but you also want it set up. Well it's only coarse if you have the stator. If you don't you don't have to worry about it because you still have to screw it in and then uh, you want to keep that down close because the flywheel goes on there and you don't want it to catch and wear it out and short it out. So that's where I'm sitting at right here. So we're going to get this piece assembled as far as we could take it and I think it's going to be motherfucking beer time. Got this in place. You want to be very careful. What I noticed with this Chinese block is like I said before, the metal is very soft and it doesn't take much to strip out these threads. That's why I'm a little concerned how long this is gonna last. But the whole purpose of doing this is to see how long these Chinese parts will last. Hey buddy, you running away from me. Motherfucking beer, chop some wood. Motherfucking beer time. Well, that's slowly starting to look like a chainsaw, but this beer's getting warm. Oh yeah, motherfucking beer time. Oh, I was hoping to have most of this project done today. I do, however. Still need to make a clutch tool to remove that clutch tomorrow. I'm still not sure if I'm gonna drill it or cut it or put it in the mill and machine it. 
I was hoping to have this done this weekend, but I don't think that's going to be possible. I gotta get a barbecue grill tomorrow too and fix my barbecue. I could just buy a new, whole new unit, but that's 500 bucks and I get a new burner for like 50. So I gotta squeeze that in my day tomorrow. Anyways, motherfucking beer time. If you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. And I wanna thank you guys for following along with this Chinese Husqvarna build.